looking for magic cards at flipsidegaming.com you can now use the promo code LVD to get a 10% discount on orders over $10 and you also get automatically entered into the M20 booster box giveaway which runs until July 15th. Alright, what do we have? Voracious Hydra is not bad. Just a nice card at any point in the curve, basically, and scales well into the late game. We've got our White Cavalier, which is okay too. Probably not the best Cavalier for Limited. I'm guessing the blue one is probably the better one there. Uh, Tails End, probably more of a sideboard card. Same best of one, we're not gonna play it. Icon can be okay based on how many creatures with the same type we have, but might be difficult to pull off, we'll see. Regisaur is always good, the discard is a pretty big drawback, but just 3 mana 7 6 is too good to ignore, and there's a few interesting synergies with this as well. And then Cage is also more of a sideboard card for Constructed, not a card you're gonna play in Limited unless the opponent has some insane uh, graveyard synergies. So a few good rares, a few duds. So let's take a look at whites. What stands out in whites? Gift is playable if unexciting. Disenchant's more of our sideboard card. Ace is fine. Pacifism is nice removal, so that's definitely one of the better ones. Assault is also reasonable removal. We've got some okay flyers. Griffin Sentinel and Griffin Protector are both okay. Then we've got the Inspired Charge for maybe a Go White theme if we've got a few token makers, although that doesn't really seem the case. Captain's medium at best. Splicer's quite good and also plays well with maybe a token theme, making two creatures for just one card. So the Splicer's also a pretty exciting card. And then of course a Cavalier. And finally a Dawning Angel, which is also fine. 3-2 Flyer that gains a bit of life. So overall White looks okay. Don't have much at the early parts of our curve. Chaplain can be playable. Kind of depends how good she is based on some of the other synergies in the deck. But some okay removal, some flyers, and then some individually powerful cards with the Splicer and the Cavalier. So white could definitely be one of our colors. Taking a look at blue. So in blue we've got hardcover, probably not a card we're too interested in. We've got the Sailor, which is quite okay. Just 1-1 one, one flyer for one with relevant ability, drawing cards in the late game if there's a board stall. So I'm happy to play this one. Uh, Cutthroat's also quite good. If we have any ways of triggering it, then it's pretty good. Like a 3-2 two for 2 is definitely above the curve. So even just putting 1 plus 1 plus 1 counter on it makes it quite good. And we do have the Spectral Sailor, which combos with it. So those are two cards that play well with each other. Got the sprite, which is okay. Uh, the mode kind of depends how the deck is shaped up. If we actively want to create board stalls, then the mode could be okay. If we maybe have a lot of flying creatures to take over the air while we protect the ground with the mode. And we do have quite a few flyers here in white, so maybe if we end up blue-white, then the mode makes a cut just as a good creature on the ground while we have some flyers getting in damage in the air. But it's kind of a contextual card. It's not individually powerful, but it can fit into the right deck, I think. Then the gates could maybe main deck one copy. There's some like expensive removal spells in the set that we might want to negate. Uh, overall, probably starts in the sideboard more often than not. And it gets better, of course, if we have cards like Cutthroat or Sailor, which we can play at instant speed and plays well with the activated ability of the Sailor as well. So negate goes up in value the more like instant speed cards we can play, which this deck might be able to do. Then we've got the Weaponsmith, which let's uh, take a look whether or not we opened any of the artifacts that fit with it. Um, we have the bow, and we've got the vial, so we've got both pieces of the Weaponsmith. So who knows, maybe the Weaponsmith is worth it. Definitely vial more exciting than bow, typically speaking. But uh, the bow can be okay maybe if we have a lot of evasive creatures, which seems to be the case. And then taking a look here, we've got the tails and Zephyr Charge, which isn't too exciting. 
pretty expensive to activate, difficult to be worth an entire card, but I could see this being a good sideboard option if uh, there's a lot of ground stalls. Uh, Befuddle is kind of a replaceable card, but can be okay. It's kind of a cantrip that affects the board. Uh, the Cloud Kinsir is probably one of the best commons in the entire set, alongside cards like Murder. So this card is just great. 2-1 Flyer for 3 is already acceptable, and then drawing a card is just very good. And then Frostlings is also great. 3 mana 2-2, two, two, tap something down for a turn. Nice tempo play. Uh, Portal can have some interesting synergies. I guess it plays well with Enter the Battlefield abilities like the Seer, the Lynx. Probably not a card you're going to start too often, but I could see this being okay in some decks if you have enough synergies with it. And can only activate it during your turn, so it's not a way of stopping removal spells from the opponent. You really want to be comboing Enter the Battlefield abilities. Then we've got the Denizen, which can also be a win condition milling the opponent out. And a 3 mana 2-3 may or may not be good enough, haven't played the format enough to know whether a 2-3-4-3 three, three is what you want, how the power and toughness lines up. So we'll have to wait and see and play the format more to figure that out. But uh, it can be a win condition, so if you've got multiples of these, they kind of get better. We just have the one, so we're not too interested in it. And then we've got the Fortress Crab as a nice blocker on the ground, so if we're on the blue-white flyers plan, then uh, Crab could be okay. And then Aerial Elemental is also great, 5 mana 4 for Flyer. It's just a great limited card, so happy to have that. So just looking at the first two colors here, blue-white seems like a pretty good fit. Both colors are strong, pretty deep. Um, lots of win conditions. In white we had a decent amount of removal. So just looking at these first two colors, I would be pretty happy with blue-white. But let's take a look at the other colors here. There might be an even better combination hiding somewhere. So in black we've got the Burglar, which is fine, 2-2, two, two, lifelink on offense. The Fun Lurker is also fine, kind of an increased or improved Burglar Rat, even though it's a bit more difficult to cast. We've got the Vulture, which a 2-2 two, two Flyer for 3 again is fine, and has some Graveyard Synergies as well. Mind Rot can be a playable limited card, if the format ends up being a little slower, then Mind Rot gets a little bit better. And from what I've seen, Corsets 2020 seems like a relatively slow Corset, so I'm guessing Mind Rot is better than average. And a Murder, of course, being a common is great, probably the best common in the set. 3 mana instant speed removal, kills anything, there's a lot of expensive creatures in the set, lots of 6 drops that this can kill, so this card is just great. Then we've got the Regisaur, which we've discussed, just being pretty good. The Cutthroat, so an interesting combo we have in this deck, potentially, is Cutthroat plus um, the Heart Piercer Bow. We can deal one damage to a creature and then use the Cutthroat to finish it off. And we even have the uh, Portal to maybe bounce the Cutthroat back to our hand to replay that entire combo. So. That's an interaction that could be okay. And of course, Cutthroat by itself is sometimes a playable magic card, so something to look out for. We've got the Necromancer as an okay limited card. If we can get the extra creature, we get 5 power and toughness for 5 mana, which is okay. Spread across 2 creatures. So, fine card, nothing super exciting, but I'll happily play this if I need a 5 drop. We've got the Epicure with maybe some life gain synergy, so it's probably going to be at its best in black-white, where we've got most life gain synergies. Probably not going to be too exciting in our pool, unless we wanted to play with, like, double Chaplain. But even then, it's not insane. Then we've got a Scourger, 5 mana 3-3, three, three, deals damage to target opponent or planeswalker equal to the number of creatures we control. So it can be a decent finisher. So I'm guessing this is going to be at its best in a more aggressive red-black type deck, or maybe a go-white, black-white deck that makes a lot of tokens, where this can be a good finisher. If your deck just needs a bit of reach, then the Scourger can do the job. And then Abomination is probably one of the weaker 6-drops in the set. 5-5 five, five Death Touch. So if you need a 6-drop, this will do, but hopefully you can do without.
And then in red, we've got double Infuriate as a nice pump spell, plus three plus two for one mana. So for deck is super aggro and we want some combo tricks, this is a pretty good one. Almost giant growth, couldn't quite get the three toughness there, but uh, pretty close, so pretty good combo trick. We've got the Air Strike, which I don't think we're going to be main decking very often, but could be a nice sideboard card if we're playing best of three. Shock is back and is always pretty good. No exception here. We've got the Amber Cat, which is okay, just two mana, two, two, with maybe a bit of upside. We've got the Maniacal Rage as an aura for deck is hyper aggro. We've got the Mastiff, which is great in multiples, we just have the one copy. But otherwise, it's still just a two mana, two, two, with a bit of upside. And then the Spitfire, which can be quite good by itself as a 1-3 flyer that every now and then gets uh, plus 3 plus 0. We've got the Shock to combo with it. Um, what else? We've got Chandra to combo with it. The Amber Cat can ramp it out, so we've got some synergies with the Spitfire here. Then we've got a Goblin Smuggler, which is also pretty decent. Can break board stalls with the ability, so definitely a card that kind of has to be answered if you're the aggressor. We've got Double Chandra, which is a pretty good card too multiple shocks basically with the minus two can pump our elementals which we have a few of with the amber cat and the spitfire maybe some other ones in different colors as well and uh yeah also kind of ramps us with the minus making double red it's a pretty good card in general and then the outrage is also great another nice reprint dealing four to a creature and two to a player so this is also great with the spitfire and then the Rift is more of a weird sideboard card, but usually doesn't make the cut. So Ruts, okay. Um, but it's not super deep. Like, we've got a few individually powerful cards, the Spitfire, the Outrage, the Double Chandra, and the Shock is okay. But it, it lacks a bit of the depth that we had in some of our other color combinations here. And then in green, got the Sentinel at 2, it's fine. We've got the Corsair at 3, which is fine. Then the Invocation, which is probably one of the auras I like the most, just because it can potentially catch the opponent off guard if they don't know the set well and don't play around it. Kind of acting as a combo trick that sticks around as an aura, which is pretty sweet. We've got uh, Ferocious Pop making an 0-1 and a 2-2, so plays well in the Go White, Green White archetype. An 0-1 Chum Blocker while getting a 2-2 can be okay. And of course Art is great too. Then we've got the gift for maybe a bit of ramp. Natural ends as probably a sideboard card. Don't think we want to be main decking disenchants in this set. And then the tracker can be a nice mana sink as well. Got two of those. So if we're trying to grind out the late game, the ability on the tracker could be useful. And then shaman is also a great common five mana five for trample. And when it dies, draw a card. So this card is great. It's definitely kind of on the level of murder and uh, three mana to one flyer in blue. All these cards are super pushed at common and the silver back is no exception. And then we've got the Hydra as one of our rares. So I've got some okay cards in green, but it's not super deep. Like the Hydra, the silver back are cards I'm excited about. And then we've got some other playable cards, but the color isn't very deep. And then we've got the Eagles, so wow. We were talking about how blue-white flyers could be a good archetype, and that was before seeing the eagle, but the eagle just makes that even better. So definitely the first deck that we're going to lay out here is blue-white. And then looking at our lands, we've got the cliffs and the blossoming sands. So it could maybe allow for some splashing in the adjacent colors. And we've got a siege breaker as well as one of our multicolor cards. And then looking at our artifacts, we've got the bow and the vial to go with our weaponsmith. We've got an axe as another equipment. And these equipment could be okay for like uh, trying to equip one of our flyers to get in extra damage. The equipment play well with lifelink creatures like the chaplain, for example. So those are the types of cards we're going to be on the lookout for. Fencing Ace also plays great with those equipments, thanks to Double Strike. So we might end up uh, playing some of these. Prismite is pretty bad filler, but if you need a 2-drop and you need some mana fixing, this could maybe help out. The Vial's okay if you need a bit of removal, and of course if we have the Weaponsmith, that could be fine. 
and then the icon will have to double check creature types. Uh, what do we think about a wand? It's pretty slow. Not sure how many wand toughness creatures there are that are kind of must kill. I'm guessing probably not that many. So unless you're playing a best of three and you see that your opponent has a ton of wand toughness stuff. I don't think we're too excited about a wand. I mean it can also be a win condition but it's pretty slow. This is probably one of those cards we'll have to get a bit more experience with, play a bit more with, before we can really kind of uh, engage his power level. Because, I mean, pingers are historically pretty good. It's just that this one costs 3 mana whenever we activate it, which isn't great. So we'll see. I guess it also combos with the uh, cutthroats in black, which can finish off a creature that's dealt damage. Although then we're talking 7 mana total, which is pretty expensive. And then we've got the Raptor as a 1 flying first strike, so I guess it's filler if we need a 4-drop and if we need some additional flyers, could be okay in our blue-white flyers deck. We've got a bit of synergy with it. And then we've got a Pattern Matcher, which is also an interesting card, so if we've got some duplicates in our deck that we wouldn't mind getting additional copies of in the mid to late game, then Pattern Matcher becomes an interesting card as well. And finally, a Stone Golem, which isn't too exciting. So, overall, looking at this pool, I think we're mostly interested in blue-white. Uh, black had some potential too. Um, red had some okay cards, but overall wasn't deep enough. Same with green. So, yeah, I think blue-white is probably the most logical place to start here. So, let's uh, lay it out. I don't think we're going to want Aegis. Maybe Angelic Gifts, maybe Chaplains, we'll see. Maybe Fencing Ace, definitely Pacifism, Assault, the Flyers. Don't think we're gonna need Inspire Charge or Chaplain, but the Splicer's great, Cavalier's great, and Angel's great. And then in blue we've got the Sailor, Double Cutthroat, Sprite. I think Moat's gonna be okay here. And we might want one Negate since we have a decent amount of Insta Speed stuff to do. And then the Weaponsmith could be interesting as well. And then maybe the Befuddle, Seer for sure, Lynx for sure. I uh, don't think we're going to want a Sanctuary. And I don't think we need the Denizen. Crab might be okay just as a blocker and an Aeromantle as another finisher. And then we've got the Eagle as a multicolor card. And then I'm guessing we definitely want the Vile. Not sure about the Bow. I don't think we want a Bow. And then maybe the axe and maybe the raptor so we've got uh, four cuts to make if we want to play with 17 lands and looking at our curve it's not insanely high so i think 17 is probably fine so let's lay out our curve the way we would actually play it here so these are all cards we can realistically play on turn two fours, the fives. All right, so we need to make four cuts. I don't think the chaplain's going to be necessary. Chaplain would be a decent blocker on the ground while we get in with our flyers. We've got a few equipments that could play well with it, but overall it's a relatively weak card. So I think we can cut those since we've got plenty of two drops. How many synergies do we have with the cutthroat? Well, a second cutthroat plays well with the first one. I've got a sailor to combo with it. Negate, befuddle. That's about it. So I don't have a ton of synergy with it, but it might be good enough. Again, if we can get one plus one plus one counter on it, I think we're happy. So I could see this being okay. Yeah, that's an interesting interaction to point out. Cavalier of Dawn plus the uh, retributive wand can destroy your own artifact and then deal 5 damage to any target. But um, I don't think we need to play wand to make our cavalier better. Like maybe if we need a mana sink we can consider the wand, but I'm guessing that Marauder's Axe is probably better. And there's only, only so many of those types of cards we want in our deck. Angelic Gift Cantrips give something flying. Most of our creatures already have flying. 
but giving like a cutthroat flying could be relevant. Giving a golem token flying, maybe a crab flying. Get some okay targets for it. And like at the very worst it's a two mana to draw card. So I don't hate it. Pacifism is great. I think one negate is fine if we're planning to play the cutthroats. And then assault is fine. And befuddle seems okay as well because uh, of the combo with cutthroat. Then the fencing ace seems decent if we're planning to play the Marauder Axe. A 1-1 one, one double strike for two is still a fine card, can basically hold off any one toughness creatures from the opponents. We don't have any additional first rank creatures I don't think, because first rank creatures also kind of stack well in multiples, I guess, never mind, we have the raptor. So if we have both the fencing ace and the raptor in play we can hold off three toughness creatures from the opponent on the ground, which is also relevant. So yeah, I think Fencing Ace is fine. And then um, Sprite seems fine with her flying plan. Plays great with the Eagle, since if we have the Eagle pumping the Sprite's toughness, we can even activate it an additional time before it dies. Uh, the Moat seems okay as just a blocker on the ground while we get in with our Flyers. Weaponsmith seems okay. We've got a few artifacts that this can ramp out. With our Raptor, the Axe and the Vial. And it, of course, can find a vial, which makes it a nice uh, two-for-one, potentially. I don't think we want to go as far as to include the bow, since I don't think we have enough incentive to want a bow. And then at three, I've got the griffin, which seems fine. Seer is great, lynx is great, eagle is great. And at four, we've got the griffin protector, which also seems fine. Splicer is great. Crab could be cuttable. And then Angel, Cavalier and Aeromantle are all excellent. So cards are most likely to cut here. Fortress Crab, Raptor, maybe a Cutthroat, maybe a Befuddle. Maybe the Weaponsmith. Although I kind of like it if we have the Vial. So let's see, what are we cutting here? Cutthroat, Raptor, Crab. Maybe the Angelic Gifts. And then the Negate also loses a bit of value if we're not playing the Cutthroats. So those are probably the cards I'm most looking to cut. And I think 17 lands is fine. I don't have a ton of Flood Protection. So that could be like a reason to cheat on mana a little bit. But we do really want to just like curve out up to 5 mana. So I don't think we want to mess with our 17 lands too much. We've got like uh, Sailor as a nice mana sink, Axe to equip. So we've got a few ways to spend our mana in the late game. The 4-4 Golem could be great with the Weaponsmith and a Splicer, that's true. But I think we already have a decent chunk of 5s that are all better. So even though this does get a little bit better with both the Master Splicer and the... Weaponsmith, I'm still not too excited about a Stone Golem. But, uh, you know, if we were playing best of three and our opponent had a lot of, like, three twos and three threes, where the Stone Golem would match up well by itself, then I could consider bringing this in. But as it stands, I don't think I want it in the main deck. And then I guess we didn't uh, consider Icon yet. Don't think the Icon's gonna be good enough. Oh yeah, if we click on the stats, we get to see that too. So yeah, we've got three pirates, three humans, four elementals. But yeah, still not not enough that I, I think I want the icon. Yeah, icon's out. Do we have enough for pattern matcher to be good? So when evaluating pattern matcher, we probably want to look at like how many three plus casting cost cards do we have multiples of, since I'm assuming that most two drops we're not going to be too excited to draw an additional copy in the late game. Like, the only duplicates we have are the Cutthroats, and that's it. And I'm not too excited about pattern matching a Cutthroat. So I think we can easily leave that one in the side. Alright, so we got to make two cuts out of these uh, six cards here. Alright, so people like the Cutthroats. And then the Raptor and the Crab followed. This means cutting Befuddle and cutting the Gift. I don't think Gift is amazing in our deck since most of our creatures already have flying, so that's a fine cut. Cutting Befuddle makes our two Cutthroats a little bit worse. 
So there is some consideration to if we play Cutthroat, we want to befuddle. So if we were to keep befuddle, we're maybe cutting a crab. Cutting crab could be okay. What do we have in terms of good blockers? Like we've got the Weaponsmith, which is an okay blocker. The moat is pretty good. If we can grow the Cutthroats alongside befuddle, then they can also trade off for bigger things. And let's see, a Lynx can slow the opponent down. We've got the Golem, which can be pretty big. And then our Cavalier is also pretty big to get past. So a Crab could be okay in our deck, just as an additional defensive creature. But uh, I think if we're gonna play the Cutthroats, I want an additional spell to cast in the opponent's turn, which means playing Befuddle. And I think I'm still in favor of uh, 17 lands. All right, and then our mana distribution. We need triple wine for this Cavalier. So that's a major reason to want an extra planes, even though we might have more blue cards in general. To consistently cast it, we would need 13 sources, which isn't happening. I'm guessing that means we probably want the extra white source anyway. So let's go with nine planes and eight islands. And maybe we'll get lucky and cast a Cavalier on curve. Forgot to change our uh, basic land art. We'll have to address that soon here. All right, so what do we think of this opening hand? Well, we have double planes, which is good for Cavalier, but it's bad for these uh, blue two drops. So if we hit a blue source, the sand is quite strong since we've got most of our best cards here, the Eagle, the Seer, the Cavalier. If we don't find a blue source within our next draw set, basically, then uh, the sand could fall apart. So it hurts. I think on the draw I would keep, but on the play I think we have to mulligan. So this we can keep. What do we put on the bottom? Could just be the Cutthroats. Could be maybe the Griffin. Like if we put the Cutthroat on the bottom, we're not doing much in the early game. Do have a pacifism as removal, but this could potentially get in a couple points of damage, don't have any instant to go with it though. Definitely want to keep the elemental as a nice curve topper and the pacifism. And our lands. So it's between the griffin and the cutthroat. Don't know how good the cutthroat is going to be, don't have a ton of ways to trigger it necessarily, don't have one in hand. But I think I'll keep it just to have an early play, so that at least the Cutthroat can maybe trade off for the opponent's 2-drop or 3-drop instead of having to use pacifism to prevent damage. Scorpion. All right, the ace lines up pretty well against a 1-1 one -one death touch. And Leaf can draw it. Ooh, nice. So, no real point in attacking here. Like, we could bluff attack, but I would rather not. And then we can, end of turn, go Cutthroat into Sailor and make this a 3-2. And then we've got Sailor as a mana sink if we hit a land on turn 4. Opponent on Teamer. Hopefully no Omnaths in their deck. Octo Prophet resolves. And then the Cutthroat will be able to trade off for the Prophet. And there's our land, perfect. So. Sailor gets in for one, end of turn we get to draw a card. Could have also attacked with the Cutthroat. Would have been reasonable too. But I think because we have the Sailor in play, we kind of want to preserve our life total and aim for a long game where we get to exploit the Sailor to draw additional cards. Chandra might mess that up, sadly. So it's probably going to go after a Sailor. Up in 
Aerial Assault, not amazing here, but we'll just play the Aerial Mantle and hope it sticks around. Again, couldn't make the case that we should maybe attack, but opponents got the Scorpion back on defense. So they could trade that off for the Cutthroat. We don't have many ground creatures outside of maybe Cavalier, where we would want to get rid of the Scorpion. So I think we just play Elemental and hope that it uh, doesn't die. If it dies, then we don't have much going on, but at least we're not going to die anytime soon, thanks to the two removal spells in hand. So what are we hoping to draw here? I guess Cavalier would be pretty good. Chandra gets rid of our 3-2. They have access to 6 mana. We can deal with large creatures pretty well. Mostly just want to avoid removal on the elemental. Uh oh. Rabbit bites. Yep. Well, that's another reason to maybe want to get rid of the Death Touch creature. And a Lynx. So, this is not going according to plan. Well, the Raptor's okay, I guess. So this can pump the elementals next turn, which turns this into a 4-2. And this into a 2-3, which can also attack. But the Raptor can hold off the Lynx and then can finish off Chandra next turn. So I think this is a play. Let's burn brighter. So we're scheduled to take at least 5 damage. Then we get to take Chandra out of commission with the Raptor attack. Maybe use an Aerial Assault on the Octoprophets. And then uh, hope to draw well from there. Ooh. Alright, well. I think now we probably want a Pacifism on the Boreal Elemental. It's going to take our entire turn, so we're unable to play anything else. But I think it's important we get rid of this Chandra while we can. And the Elemental would be an issue long term as well, so it's fine to pacifism it. And the Ace will stay home. Could be okay to trade it off for the Lynx. Although it is holding off the Scorpion as well. So, opponent seems to be blue-green splash red for Chandra. Might be some other red cards in there too. Although Chandra is definitely a worthy splash card. If you've got some elemental synergies. Yeah, I think I'm okay trading off here. So how is the board looking like? We can just go Moat plus Lynx. Lynx can tap down the Octoprophets or the Scorpion. Raptor kind of holds off the Shaman, but we also want to start attacking at some point. I guess we can just tap down the Octoprophets, trade off Lynx for Shaman. It's probably fine. And then hold the Moat. The Scorpion gets in for one maybe. It's probably fine. So as the board sits, we're kind of trading two damage for one damage with the Scorpion, since these kind of trade off with each other. And we've got a removal spell to maybe answer a big top deck from the opponent. Opponent does have a bit of a life total advantage. Ooh, that's a good one. They get to return their flyer that's enchanted by pacifism. And now they have a 4 4 and next turn a 3 4. It's gonna be difficult to beat. 
So now we can play the Angel, gain a bit of life, put a 3-2 in play. So the Assault is probably going to have to get rid of the Elemental. But then how do we deal with this 4-4 in the meantime? Don't really want to double block. Do we want to trade 2 damage for the 1 damage from the Scorpion? Not really. I guess we got a turtle up here. But I'm not sure that the late game is going to favor us. They've already found their splash callers, so presumably their power level of cards is slightly higher than a two color deck. But who knows? We could top deck a cavalier and be right back into it. But otherwise, we've already drawn a lot of our good cards here. Elemental's gone. Sailor's answered, so we can no longer draw additional cards. Otherwise, that would be a pretty nice way to win a long game. Interesting that the Wave Crasher is not attacking. So, no good attacks. And then we may or may not uh, assault next turn. Both creatures are problematic. But maybe that's a necessity here, just like double block the Boreal Elemental. They get to kill both our creatures. We get to Aerial Assault the Wave Crasher, and then we're up against Scorpion plus two cards in the opponent's hand. Which doesn't seem great for us. What's the alternative? We've already used our pacifism. Most of our big flyers are gone. So it's basically like hope to top deck Cavalier. If we wait, maybe Befuddle could help in combat. And it's also interesting which creature to double block here. If we double block Wave Crasher, we save ourselves one point. But then maybe we can double spell next turn since we have to pay the two extra mana on the elemental if we want to assault that. I think I'm going to take it. We also gain a bit of life here by having the two flyers in play. And if we draw like a Befuddle, we get uh, rewarded for waiting. If we draw the axe, then first strike plus the axe could also come in handy to block the elemental. Vile uh, could also double up with first strike to take out the elemental. So I think here the plan is to assault the wave crasher and then use Vile on the elemental next turn. And then this turn we could attack with both. Or we could keep the raptor back and just attack with the angel if we want to prevent the damage from Scorpion, which seems reasonable. Alright, let's just send in the Angel. Alright, I guess the Elemental uh, only refers to spells and not abilities, so the, the Vial doesn't cost two extra mana. So we'll take three. Suppose we could have played the Vile last turn, no real reason not to. Alright. So now we can Vile. And then we can still play the Sprite, and then... I think the Angel gets to attack. So we've got Vile plus First Strike to maybe get rid of the Boreal. Not playing the Vile is kind of coming back to hurt us a little bit here, since if we had one more mana, we could have pumped the Sprite and used the Vile to kill the Boreal. We'll see what happens. Alright, no attacks, great. So it didn't get punished for not playing the Vile there. Alright, so now... Of course, we don't necessarily have any great attacks with our creatures, unless we want to two-for-one ourselves into this Boreal Elemental. Could attack with the Sprites, and then basically trade Sprite and Vile for the Boreal Elemental. If our opponent has any removal spell, then we could be in trouble, since we are at three. But again, we also want to eventually close out the game. So I think attacking with the Sprites to offer the trade 
is probably reasonable. Could also attack with the Raptor itself, but the Raptor blocks the Sentinel better than the Angel does. So I think I attack with the sprites. But we're definitely walking a tightrope here. Any interaction from our opponent and we could be in trouble. Since we don't have much card draw in our deck, I don't think we need to play out the land. Would rather bluff having something. But again, like, if we just sit here, then we also give the opponent more time to draw an answer. So we have to balance attacking to try and close out the game, while having enough back to maybe not die to a single card. Which is tricky. Definitely happy that we didn't trade 2 damage for 1 damage earlier in the game, since if we were a 2 life, that could make a pretty big difference. Yeah, the most uh, back-breaking play this game was definitely that Wave Crasher picking up the Elemental again, essentially giving the opponent a 3-4 three, three, Boreal Elemental, which is pretty good. Marauder's Axe. Could go on the Scorpion. Could go on the Sentinel. Could go on the Leafkin Droid, I guess. Yeah, that works. So now they have an additional potentially lethal threat. Opponent sends everyone. So now we're in trouble. We can put the Angel in front of the Leafkin. We can chum block the Boreal Elemental. And then vile the Greenwood Sentinel, take one. So I think that's the only way we have to survive. Well, this is pretty ugly. And at 9 life we're not close to killing the opponent on the way back. So... Pretty much Cavalier or Bust here, I think. And a Planes. Alright. So if we didn't attack with the sprites, then... We maybe weren't forced to make such an ugly chum block. I think we just gotta hope in that spot that our opponent bricks for a couple turns and that we can just kinda get them low on life. It's a close decision either way. Oh yeah, now we can make sure to change our basic land art. So let's see. Basic lands. We were also on a mulligan to 6 on the play that game, so we were down quite a few resources on the opponent. But we still made a game out of it. So yeah, just to like take another look to see if we maybe wanted to splash anything in our pool. Our mana fixing was uh, Blossoming Sands, which gives us maybe a green splash. That's not too costly, but there's no green card worth splashing. Hydra's double green, Silverback's double green, none of these other cards we really want to be splashing. And uh, Cliffs could maybe help us splash red. Could maybe splash a Chandra. Do have like four elementals in our deck, and double shock isn't bad. But a single Cliffs isn't enough, we would need to add a couple mountains to our deck. We have this Cavalier that's triple Y to cast, so I don't think it's worth it to add red to our deck. Shock is not really a card I want to be splashing. So, I don't think uh, it's necessary here. Alright, so we're on the draw. We've got a keepable hand, I think. Double Island, not great with our Cavalier, but we get to cast some spells in the meantime. I think I'm gonna go for the Cutthroat here. Hits a little bit harder than the Sprites. Although it's, I guess, pretty close. 
since the cutthroat is more likely to get blocked. Could also keep the cutthroat as kind of a combo trick for the protector. Alright, the lich. It's a pretty good one. 1-3, one, death touch, lifelink with the relevant ability. It's gonna take a while before we can actually block it profitably. Alright, that was a pretty good draw. So now we get to play the sprites. And Sailor will grow the Cutthroat, which lets us block the Lich. So in hindsight, had we played the Sprite first, we could have gotten in one damage and then drawn the Sailor and had both had instant speed to maybe ambush the Lich. We could have also just like double blocked the Lich since they only have one point of power, so double blocking would have taken it out as well. Alright, so now what? Opponent's got a 2 2 flyer, reducing the cost of flyers. Drawing a planes is good for Cavalier, so we have to decide between Splicer and Protector. If we play Protector first, next turn Splicer is going to pump it. Sprite is a fine attacker into this Warden. I don't mind trading it even though it costs us our entire turn. So let's go ahead and attack. Could also send a cutthroat. I think I want to keep that back to block the Lich. Take one. And then next turn we can splice it up. Sir so points on Esper. Blue, black, splash, white is the most likely scenario here. And the siphon is going to take out the sailor, which could otherwise provide a nice late game advantage. Lich attacks. I think we trade off. Since this death toucher is going to be annoying for the cavalier otherwise. Nice. So we could play the cavalier right now. So we could even destroy our own creature if we wanted to. To make a golem doesn't sound bad, or we could just play the splicer first. Next turn kill our own splicer, even though we then lose out on the golem synergy. Or we could just wait for them to maybe play something good that we can kill with cavalier. So I think either way playing the splicer this turn is fine. And I'll play my planes first, so we can still pump the sprites without maybe needing to play the island. Pump our griffin. Send both. And trade off. Alright, so we've got a nice board presence going here. And we've got one of our best cards in our hand. If Cavalier dies, we get to return artifact or enchantment, so don't have any of those. Ooh, embodiment of agonies. 3-3 three, three flying death touch. So what happens if we kill that? Then our 4-4 four, four still gets to attack, Griffin still gets to attack. So yeah, killing the abominants might be fine. Alternatively, we can Cavalier kill our own Master Splicer, for example. And then we still have a 3-3 Golem and a Griffin that can attack into the embodiment. I think I would rather hang on to my Griffin. Here is where we kind of want to top deck some of our mana sinks. The Sailor's gone, so we still have an axe. The Weaponsmith can find a vial eventually. Don't have a ton of card draw in our deck otherwise. Murder kills Cavalier. Pacifism isn't bad. Don't think we need to pull the trigger now. Send these. Drawing more... Flying creatures would also be fine. 
So we're maybe regretting playing that planes in case they have a mind rot. They would make us discard pacifism as well. Dumping some creatures in play. Alright, that's a good draw. So now, if we play Raptor, Pump Protector, and then Pacifism the 3 3, opponents forced to double block Burglar and Prismite on our Golem, which could be fine. Uh, although the Raptor blocks the Burglar next turn, so they don't get to gain any life unless they kill the Raptor. In which case, making the pacifism play could be appealing. As it stands, if we attack with a 4-4, they have a decent double block with Golem and Burglar. So it's a little bit aggressive to maybe use the pacifism this turn. We could get punished if they play a, gra a great flyer next turn, for example. So I think I'm going to hang on to it. But it wouldn't be unreasonable to pacifism the Golem token here, I don't think. But we have lethal with our flyers next turn. Golem is holding off the ground here. So I don't think we're in a bad spot. And first strike prevents, of course, a life gain from happening if they don't have anything. Pacifism protector. And vile can only deal damage to creatures, so can go face. But we should be able to just clear a path here. Points got double black up. Can pacifism the token, vile, kill, burglar, attack with everyone, and that could be game. Yeah, I guess this figure could be a thing. Alright, they don't have anything sweet, so we drew pretty well this game. And uh, our deck was able to get there in the end. Alright, so we're 1-1. One one. Let's keep it up. Our hand seems fine. And I guess we'll... Uh, Flash in a cutthroat here. Up against Sultai. Hmm, that's too bad. We drew our weaponsmith with the violin hand already for the first time. Uh, so, probably just gonna play the griffin here. Befuddle, sure. And next turn we can splice it up. Alright. Looks like we're going to have a trade. Sure. Opponent takes it. Not sure why they decided to do that before blockers. So if we draw land, we've got an angel, otherwise we could vile activate or play a lynx. Ooh, dungeon guys, that's a scary card. And we don't have a great answer to it. Pacifism doesn't get rid of the tapped golem. And uh, I guess we can destroy tapped creature ourselves to get rid of it, but that's about it. Can 2 for one ourselves with the vile to unlock the golem token, which might be worth it. I think we'll take three for now. I guess double blocking is not unreasonable here. One probably just kills a sentinel anyway.
Could have tanked with both. Bottom probably takes it. If they do block, then Vile could work. And I think it's worth it to Vile here, since unlocking the Golem is pretty valuable. And uh, could also Frost Links. But I don't think that's the way to go. And if they just take it, then we can play the Angel. Alright, so... Had to 2 for one ourselves there, sadly, but... Dungeon Geist is a powerful card. Siphon the token. Alright. So I've got a board presence, but opponent's still at 16 life. They could have a strong late game here. As we see, Meteor Golem. Definitely a good card. But so is the Cloudkin Seer. So if we play the Cloudkin, we don't have double blue, so we, we're not guaranteed to play anything else. Um, could Lynx, but that only gets us in two points. So it might be worth it to just play the Raptor as a more like mana efficient play. Although if we draw any land next turn, we could go Raptor plus Weaponsmith. So I think Seer is fine. And then hope to draw into an island for Lynx. Right, planes, so that doesn't really help. Do we play the planes? Um, I think we should maybe go Raptor Lynx next turn. Even though there's the risk of Mind Rot. So we'll take three. Not the card I expected my opponent to be splashing, since they seem blue-black otherwise. But who knows, maybe they're blue-green splash-black for the Siphon, and they just happen to draw two swamps and one forest. It's also possible. Alright, so... We did draw the island, so we get to play Lynx and Raptor. Now do we Lynx the Wolf token? Or do we Lynx the Golem so we don't take three on the way back? I think I like Lynxing the Wolf. Since we've got a bit of a life total advantage, so I think I, I like being a little bit more aggressive here. Don't have a great double block on the Golem, so we'll just take three. But now I've got a bit of an Air Force building up. Crasher's a good one. And we don't really want to be flooding out. So we can just send in the Flyers. Player Weaponsmith. Which doesn't have anything to search up. But just a 1-3 blocker here. Can double block the Crasher pretty effectively. And then the Cutthroat can trade for the Wolf token. Hope they don't have any inter instant speed shenanigans. Well, that definitely counts as instant speed shenanigans. It's too bad. And a removal spell on the Raptor. So it's not looking good. Befuddle would have been a nice one to have last turn, as it would have both pumped the Cutthroat and prevented the blowout. So we'll just have to use it as a gain for draw card here, basically. I 
I guess there's an argument for playing Outer Lands in case we draw the one mana pirates, which can then translate into additional cards. There's also the like mind rots to factor in. So we're seeing more green cards here, so definitely looks like blue green splash black for a siphon, which makes more sense. Uh, I think we gotta keep attacking. We're also not winning a long game against this ability from the tracker. But, uh... And Drew one too many lands. So I'll take seven. If we still had our Angelic Wings in the deck, we could have maybe won the game here. Negate instead. If we attack with the Cloudkin Seer and our opponent attacks us back with everyone, we're dead, since the fencing is jumping the golem isn't enough. But I also don't see how we win the game if we stay back, so I think we just gotta hope our opponent plays conservatively and doesn't attack us with everyone next turn. We get to chump the golem and survive. Although I'm also not sure what we can top deck to survive. I guess maybe Cavalier can help. Frostlings should just be game over here. So even had we kept uh, Seer back, we would have still died to the Lynx tapping down one of our blockers. Oh well. Relatively close game still. That Befuddle came a turn too late. Nice hand here. One drop, two drop, maybe three drop, four drop. Pretty synergistic with our Aerial Assault as well. Oh, and there's a nice one. Elemental's a good one if we can get to it. So this hand is happy to draw islands. Happy to draw spells. That's a great one. Ooh. That's a good one too, but we can just block with the Seer if we want to. Keep attacking with these. Could also just let them draw the card and then Aerial Assault it, but I think I would rather just play the Protector next turn, so if we get the chance to trade, I think I will take it. And we got to draw our card from the Seer, opponent gets to draw a card and lose one life, so we still got a slightly better deal if the trade happens. Could also make the argument of just like taking two, then playing Griffin, hope to block, but that's also where the opponent's card advantage could snowball out of hand if they then kill the Griffin, keep attacking with the Thief, things could get out of hand. And again, seeing Siphon on our Sailor here, so Sailor just soaking up all the removal spells. So if we went for the line where we just take it, then they would have had Siphon for the Protector maybe. And things could have been bad. The fact that people are so happy to kill the Sailor makes me believe that the format's kind of slow and that Games get stalled out, and that a mana sink like the Sailors is quite good. But in this game, for example, we wouldn't have had the chance to activate the Sailor yet to draw additional cards. think we'll probably just play Aerial Mantle. Could play the Angel if we want to kind of bait out removal. think I would rather just play the Elemental, get in more damage while we can. as it's also a better blocker if they don't uh, get rid of it. And 
Now what? This can gain first strike. So they don't have any answer for the Aramantle. Vulture can trade for Sprite, that's fine. So we just want to play Angel, keep up blue mana. So we can pump our Sprites. We're definitely the aggressor here with our Air Force. This is a situation where Assault can be a little awkward. If our opponent plays a big flyer, we can't kill it. So we gotta hope that uh, that doesn't happen. But it can gain us quite a bit of life, so if our opponent's just trying to race on the ground, then Assault is great. So, opponents could be dead next turn if they don't have any interaction or flyers here. Since we can play the moat, pump the griffin, get in for 10. Not gonna block, just take 7. Ooh, a green mana makes an appearance. And there's the angel, which... It's not what we wanted to see, but uh, we can still at least attack into it. So we'll play the moats. We could just attack with Griffin and Elemental for seven, or we could offer the trade with the Angel here, which is probably what they'll block. Trading is probably okay. Then the question is, do we assault the Necromancer? I think we do. I guess we probably should have assaulted first here uh, to gain the extra point of life. But then again, maybe if we assault the Necromancer, opponent changes how they block. This also represents having a combat trick, which could play a role. But I think our opponent is kind of forced into a corner where they just can't afford to play around anything. So I think in this spot, this was probably correct to just assault the Necromancer before attacking to gain the one extra life, which could end up mattering. So if we draw a creature, we could have lethal. That's fine. Alright, so we don't have lethal this turn, but it's looking good. Since now the sailor was gone, I don't think we had a major reason to play at our lands. Alright. So we're 2-2, two and two. some close games. I think we've got a keeper. We've got two of our five drops, which isn't ideal, but they're both pretty good cards. And we've got a Vial and Lynx in the meantime to interact with our opponent a little bit. Alright, dueling files. Guess we'll play the sprites. Sprite down. And we can still activate our Vial if we have to. First Strike plus uh, Vial can maybe take out a 3 toughness creature instead it's not a Vial. Alright, fair enough. Not sure what the reasoning is for waiting. Because if we had a pump spell, now we get to smack them for more. So if their plan was to vile, I think I would rather just vile right then and there. Because it's not like you're playing around a counter spell where you want the opponent to spend mana in their turn. So 
Splicer is a good one. So I've got like four different options, which are all fine. Splicer adds the most power and toughness to the board. Angel gives us another evasive threat. I think those are the main considerations. So I think I'll splice it up here. So we'll hit for four. All right, and summon, fair enough. Now I'll just replay the elemental. Support on gaining a bit of tempo back, but at the cost of a card. Says go. Let's attack. Gotta be wary of counter spells here too. Convolutes is a thing. Can't really play around it since it'll get to counter something regardless. So we could just play the like of Frostlings. Which I don't mind if it gets countered as much. But still adds something to the board. And then end of turn I'll probably just vile the digger. It's too bad. Play the splicer. Which on an empty board is probably going to do more damage than the Dawning Angel. And then flash in the Sailor end of turn, maybe start drawing some cards, we'll see. That's a good one though. A turn too late here on the cutthroat, that's fine. So I'll just send the golem, and then I think I would rather just uh, activate the sailor, then play the angel here, since her opponent's not low enough where we can start attacking with everyone to push damage. And the angel just gets blanked by the elemental anyway. So might as well just leverage the sailor. Could have main face activated it, but we also represent having more interaction this way. All right, that can maybe take out our Sailor. But then we get to attack back. So our Sailor is having a bad day. Just keeps on getting killed. Negate's a good one, so... Get the player Angel with Negate backup. And next turn we should have lethal. Unless something strange happens. So our opponent playing both the bow and the vial probably means that they have the weaponsmith in their deck. We decided not to play the bow even though we had the combo. Alright. Well, Angel could stabilize them here. So now what? If we attack with everyone, I guess they're still dead if they don't have anything. And the gate should cover most cases. So they basically needed something like a cutthroat to survive. Alright, so close game. Opponent almost managed to stabilize. Alright, so we're 3 and 2. Let's see if we can get another win here. Uh, 
hand seems fine. We're on the draw. If we draw third land, we get to play the Seer, which likely draws us into more lands. On the play, the sand would be a little sketchier, but still probably keepable with a vial as interaction. Alright, so let's just play Revile. And turn 3, probably play the Cloudkin. Sentinel. Alright, so now the Cloudkin doesn't necessarily attack all that well. Drawing the Weaponsmith after the Vile is a little awkward. So we could play our own Sentinel. It's probably fine. Could also play Cloudkin into Lynx and then set up a, an attack. I think we probably have better targets for Lynx in the future. So let's just play the Sentinel. And then we have the Vile to kill theirs, so... We maybe get to block their Sentinel, but they maybe don't get to block ours. Hmm. There are a lot of combat tricks floating around, but making them use a trick on turn 4 instead of deploying the rest of their hand could be beneficial, so... Could be okay to take one here, since it's a pretty low cost, but... I'm no coward. Alright. Well, that's definitely a problem. So now what? Yeah, I mean, we can attack with our Sentinel at a Jani. And Pwn probably blocks. We can use Vile to finish off the Sentinel, or we could use Vile on the Pride Mate token. And then play a Weaponsmith. We could Frost Link, stab this down, attack for one. Could play the Cloudkin Seer to develop our Flying Air Force, and then next turn maybe tap down a Sentinel to kill a Jani. I think I like attacking. And then just playing the Weaponsmith if they block. This uh, Ajani Sprite Mate token could prove to be more problematic in the future. But preserving our flyer to pressure the Ajani seems pretty worthwhile. Although this is not good for us. So again, links to tap down Protector. But it only gets us in an attack for one. This just has so much loyalty. So I guess we can play Rome Griffin. And I guess it was kind of a free roll to attack with the Sentinel here. Should have definitely attacked the Jani. Since our Sentinel has Vigilance. But I guess now if we attack with the Sentinel in the future... It's going to be a bit more meaningful, and they'll maybe reconsider blocking. Probably should have just tried. So if our opponent plays any more flyers, we're going to be in serious trouble. Well, that technically doesn't count, since it's only flying in their turn. So we can put a Jani down to one. Had we drawn a land, we could have played a fencing ace as well. Which would have been enough. Please, do the right thing. And yeah, every turn that goes by, the Pride Mate keeps growing, so... Definitely not a card you want to be facing in Limited. The Aeronaut is also big enough to attack into our Sentinel. Opponent's casually at 32 life here. So 
So we'll take eight. All right, so Johnny's dead. That's good. Now, what do we do next? We can play the Seer to dig deeper into our deck. If we hit a land, we also get to play a Fencing Ace. Although it's also awkward that we want to keep up white so that any land lets us play the Fencing Ace, but we want to keep up blue so that if we don't draw a land, we get to play the Sailor. So we should probably just keep up blue. And then if we draw planes, great. So we also have more planes in the deck than islands. Do want to try and get to this elemental as soon as possible, which is probably the best way to victory. Alright, that could still be fine. So let us attack here. The sailor could also like be kind of a combo trick for this griffin, but We'll see what happens. Pretty far behind in terms of power and toughness in play. This is probably a game where we're not going to have the mana or the time to activate Sailor. So we'll probably have to use it as a blocker. So if we flash in Sailor, we can double block the Aeronaut. Hope they don't have a trick. And then we can double block Keldon Raider with Lynx and Weaponsmith. And then take eight. Alternatively, we could triple block the Griffin. Which might be slightly better. Although, also riskier if they have interaction, because then we might end up losing more creatures. So I think I'm going to go with my original blocks. Which only has us losing two creatures, but taking eight. And hope to dodge any instant speed tricks here. And God's willing. Alright, still not too bad. So the triple block on Griffin would have been kind of a disaster had we tried. But we're still in a lot of trouble here. Good Aerial Assault, uh, I guess the Pride Mate token seems okay. Gain a bit of life as well. We don't have any unsummons in our deck, otherwise you could make the case for like not killing the token, which we can maybe more easily deal with in the future. Not in any position to attack. Just got to hope to survive this onslaught and then eventually maybe use a Sailor to get ahead on cards. Or just hope they draw a few extra lands. Opponents missed a few land drops, so their hand is probably all spells. They can also pump the Mastiff. So how do we block if, let's say, they play one creature pre combo to pump Griffin? Then we could still double block Griffin with Cloudkin and Protector. And that's not a bad block. And then probably just take four. Although that does start adding up. Yeah, we could also double block Kelden Raider with Griffin and Weaponsmith. And only lose Griffin. I guess maybe that's better. Because if we draw land, we've got an Aerial Mental, which can probably block the Protector. But it doesn't necessarily block the Kelden Raider all that profitably. So block like this. We're still in a bit of trouble here. This elemental that they just played is pretty big. But there's a land. If we play our elemental, then we have a good block on protector. Seer could always jump in front of the mastiff. And we could chump their Fire Elemental as well. Let's say they just attack with Fire Elemental and that's it. Then we could triple block with Cloudkin, Weaponsmith and Sailor, but then they would all die. 
which isn't great. Uh, what if we play something else? Maybe just play like a sprite, keep a befuddle. What happens? That could work out okay. Although if we play the air elemental, then the befuddle is going to be even more effective the turn after. So I think that's probably going to be my play here. Player 4-4 four, four flyer. Maybe we're going to be forced to chum block this fire elemental. Maybe not. But then next turn the befuddle is going to be even more effective with the 4-4 four, four creature. All the reduced ashes is the opposite that we wanted to see here. So yeah, we can double block here, trade these off, chum the Feral Mantle, take two, or we can trade for the Mastiff, chum the Feral Mantle, take two. I think we gotta hope to draw like a Pacifism. That's no pacifism. Can still survive, we, thanks to Befuddle. So we get to Fencing Ace or Sprite, we can choose which one we want to trade off for the Mastiff. And then next turn play the other one. Would we rather have a Sprite or a Fencing Ace once the dust settles? So I think I would rather trade off with the Sprite and then have a Fencing Ace left over. Not sure. If we draw like an axe, the fencing ace can trade off a bit better, I think. Cutthroats. Alright, so if they have nothing, we can trade for this elemental. So I guess now we're dead. Creatures without flying can block this turn, being pretty relevant. Had we done it the other way around, we would have still had a sprite in play. And we could have maybe chum blocked the elemental. Although we still would have been in uh, rough shape. Come next turn. Oh well, close game. We were kind of on the back foot the entire time. Almost managed to beat the uh, turn 4 Ajani. Which is probably one of the best plays you can make on turn 4. So... Not too upset with uh, how things ended up, but uh, yeah, sometimes you'll lose to a powerful Mythic Rare. So 3-3, three and three, I thought our deck was okay, not insane, so 3-3 three and three seems about right. Maybe could have gotten one extra win in there, but uh, yeah, we'll claim our prize. And crack some packs. Cavalier of Flame, nice Mythic Rare. Definitely a lot more powerful than I originally gave it credit for, just because it gives all your creatures haste with the 2-man ability. So if you play any additional creature the following turn, you can give it haste right away with the ability, but of course all the Cavaliers are busted and limited. So I'll happily play this in any limited deck, even though the triple color requirement makes it somewhat restrictive to play. Otherwise, there's some other powerful cards here too. The Warlord is great in a tokens deck. Outrage is great removal. Assault is fine. We've got a Tail's End, which is more for constructed in terms of limited. This booster is somewhat disappointing. Um, if you've got an aggressive deck, the Pegasus can be fine. Especially if you've got a lot of two drops and other evasive creatures. So it's not a terrible first pick. Scourger could be okay if you've got a go-white deck or a very aggressive red-black. Go to the face deck. No other cards I'm too excited to first pick. Like Axis playable, but don't really want to be first picking it. Ooh, Dracoseth. In Constructed, people try to cheat this in play with the reanimator cards. 
but in limited, just paying 7 mana for this is totally fine. And once this resolves and you get to attack with it, it's usually game over. So that would be a great first pick. Otherwise, there are some other fine cards here. Reduced to Ashes, good removal. Definitely saw it in action in the sealed run. Killing or air elementals pretty often. And uh, Squad Captain can be okay if you've got a nice go white deck. Plays well with cards like Ferocious Pop. So I want to thank everyone for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.